I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit professional and it's not the right word. Uh, while filming, I forgot to, to film the first step because I got a little bit excited and impatient, I guess. Um, forgot to press record. So what you want to do before you before you glue it down, you're going to want to place it against the body to make sure that it fits where you want it to fit and kind of customize the placement of it. It's like cool, like maybe I want it to be lower because I don't want this bit to get to go up in the neck. Fold and so then you put it down here. Cool. Um, and then afterwards that step, um, what you're going to want to do is, is put glue on it. Um, and you want to take the glue all the way on the back side, all the way up to the edge, um, where the, I forgot the name, <laughs> anyway, all the, way, all the way to the thicker edge, all the way up there, um, you want to put Prezzade over it, and I, I usually use cotton tips just because you can throw them away, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to washing brushes, um, and so I just kind of put the Prezzade on in circles, um, and to help it dry out, keep kind of um, circling the Prezzade around on the back of the silicon. Um, and you're going to want to make sure you, you have enough glue because if you don't glue it down properly, you know, the edges won't be as, as tight and as nice as you want them to be. Um, and you have to wait for the prosthetic to dry clear if you put it on when the prosthetic is still wet because it is quite translucent. You'll see the white prosthetic underneath and without any exposure to air, it's just going to stay wet and white underneath and not look as realistic as you want. So put enough glue and make sure it dries completely clear before you place it down, okay? Okay, back to filming. So um, I've placed the piece on my sister's neck um, with the glue um, and I'm just pulling out the cat plastic edges to kind of get a really smooth um, just to get a really smooth edge make sure all the cat plastic isn't folded all over itself it's just smoothly glued down onto her skin um, and once I'm happy with the positioning and all the edges being stuck down I'm gonna get my 99% isopropyl alcohol um, and so because I've used um, the Encapsulating Plastic Super Bowl these, it's dissolved with 99% so it's just super easy. I'm gonna get a cotton tip, I'm going to keep dipping it into the 99% isopropyl alcohol, um, just as close to the edge as I can. Um, to first of all I'm going to get off that thicker edge layer and then once that's taken off I'm just going to keep blending down the edges until it looks, um, until it looks perfectly blended to my eyes. <laughs> So one of the things that can go wrong um, when you're doing this is the, the glue is activated by the 99%. So if you if you put too much glue and the glue's kind of like loosened, um, if the model moves their neck, it can make the cat plastic fold over and create a weird edge. So make sure that you don't kind of fold over the edge while it's still or like move the neck too much while it, it's still wet with 99% alcohol. And you know as well, you don't want to. You don't want to dissolve too much of the cat plastic so that it's just a silicon edge because if you haven't got a thin enough edge then that will be pretty apparent so everything everything in moderation um, and it should it should be just fine Here is a sexy close-up of the neck. I was just really impressed. Um, sometimes I don't do a very good job of blending things out. It's a little bit of trial and error at the beginning, but I thought this one blended out so nicely. And I was like, oh, that's a nice edge. I'm gonna show a close-up of that. So now we're gonna start by color matching. So it's, it's kind of close, but we're just gonna darken it a little bit with a little bit of a tan color um, to match my sister's neck. Um, and this is something that is taking me a little while to get the hang of. I'm only just starting to get better at colour matching skin now, so it's just training your eyes to be able to see those nuances of colour, which is, it's just practice, I think. Um, and my favourite technique of doing this is to use like a cut-off chip brush and, and splatter or flick to get little droplets of colour, because I think that's the most natural looking colour you can have in an easy way to match skin colour without going like overboard or having a weird, um, you know, like edge where the colour just stops, it's kind of like a gradient. Um, and I've also, so I've added a little bit of a tan colour and I've also added a little bit of green because my sister, um, like me, has olive skin so the undertones are slightly green so I've mixed up the green with a tan colour to darken it. Um, there's something you'll find with silicon and the cat plastic is that it is, um, it's got quite a shiny finish usually and if it's textured, the texture helps. The texture helps take away some of the shine, but you still want to use an anti-shine on it. 
um, because in certain lights it will be shining and it will just stop and that will be a dead giveaway of where the silicon appliance stops. So if you want it to be completely seamless on the person's skin, you want to mattify the silicon with a little bit of anti-shine. So now I've got my Skin Illustrator FX palette and I'm going to start um, painting the inside of the wound. Um, and I really like I really like the technique now of using Skin Illustrator to build up most of the blood tones and everything so that when I apply the blood, I just put very minimal blood in there and it's all very um, you know, controlled and exactly as I want it. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a control freak. Um, so I'm going to start off by putting like an aged blood colour in first, just in the deepest parts of the wound, which is just right along the centre. And then once that's dried, because um, you want to wait for it to dry, because otherwise um, you won't get a layering effect, it'll just kind of take away the, the last colour you put down. So wait for it to dry, and then I'm going to put some of the fresh blood colour on top. I'm going to extend this a little bit further, um, right up to the edge of the, of the inside of the wound. Um, and so looking back um, at the footage, cameras are sometimes helpful because I, I noticed in the footage, oh, it looks a little bit um, like it doesn't match her skin properly, especially on the camera. And, and on the camera I could tell it needed a little bit more red because my sister's neck was a little bit flushed because I put um, a different, I put the other neck, I put the other cutthroat on her earlier so it was a bit stained from the blood and a bit red from her, the removal of the other makeup. So I'm going to get some of the rose adjuster and just um, flick that over to match it a little bit better. And here's another sexy close-up, um, just to show what the paint job looks like at this stage in detail, and you can see like all the nice texturing that's in the mold. So I'm going to put um, a, a fixer spray or a sealer spray on the outside. So another thing with silicon is the blood doesn't sit right on silicon. The blood doesn't sit like it sits on skin. It, it beads up a lot more. So that's another giveaway of where the makeup isn't. isn't. So if you put a sealer spray down, um, then the blood will sit naturally across all of it. And again, and you're just reducing the amount of telltale signs that this is a fake wound. Um, and the sealer spray is Ben Nye's um, final seal. And finally, the last step is blood. Um, and so I prefer the look of dark bloods over light bloods and just a personal aesthetic preference. Um, so this is Mold Life's Kimsington Gore and Aged. I'm going to just use the back of a paintbrush and, and fill in the inside of the wound first. And once that's filled in, um, I'm going to use a, a tissue to kind of splodge it around so that you get the appearance of blood and, and you know, kind of... Um, you get the appearance of blood and little splotches and everything without it being too overbearing, without being too much blood. Um, and I think with blood as well, is like, we're in like this, you could put it a lot of blood because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of veins and blood flow that goes through your neck, so you could just go crazy with the blood, but I'm just going to put a, a little bit of blood for this makeup um, so that you can more clearly see um, the prosthetic that's underneath it and the colour match matching and the texturing and all the work we've put into it, I want to be more visible um, and also to show off the appliance, so I'm, I'm going to put minimal blood in this video. And so using a tissue to soak up a lot of what you've put down and kind of smear it around is a good way to have a little bit of blood without it looking like it's lacking too much. Um, and then once I've cleared it up, I'm going to add like a little bit more dribbles in select places. And then go back in again a second time because I'm oop, too much blood. Take it back a lot and then finally one little dribble placed. Um, this is a close-up so you can see how well it blends out into the skin, how good the colour matching is, um, and just how well it moves And when you open it and close it. You can see like so much more of the detail. It's just, ah, I love, I love this mould. It's so good.